there is plenty of potential in the EV space, y'all. Potential for success, potential for failure, and potential for amazing technologies and teams to come into the space and totally change the way we do things for the better, including that of the way that we power our EVs. And that is the battery chemistry and technology within them. Welcome back to the Out of Spec Podcast. I'm your host, Francie, and thank you for being here. I'm going to start there. I'm grateful that you're here. I hope you're having a great day. Let's dive in. I'm going to do you a solid today by covering the topic of solid state batteries. I'd love to dive into this topic with an expert, of course, you know, someone like a battery chemist or someone in the space that can really, really dive into the details and the way the industry is going. But today we'll just start with me. Today's topic was sparked by a recent news story from the successful EV automaker born out of China and that is NEO, which has apparently filed to use solid state batteries with now 14 of its EV models. They filed this with the Chinese government, specifically its Ministry of Industry and Technology. Now, this isn't the first solid state battery news from NEO. In fact, We Lion, New Energy Technology, and NEO came out with some news almost three years ago in January of 2021, where they announced that NEO users would be able to rent the We Lion. We Lion solid state batteries. It was reported that the 150 kilowatt hour battery could power the EVs up to 1,100 kilometers on a single charge, and also that they cost about 41,000 US dollars to produce. Jeez Louise. This immediately and clearly highlights the pros and cons of solid state batteries. Great potential for range improvement, great charging numbers, but overall, do they cost an arm and a leg to produce? They're just out of reach right now. Whether or not you knew this, NEO has an interesting approach to their EVs, wherein many of them you can either rent or buy the battery that comes with the EV. And if you're renting the battery, that means that you are lucky enough to be able to use these battery swap stations. So NEO has the part of their company called NEO Power. They've deployed about a thousand of these so far, I believe, in Europe and China, these battery swap stations. And they're pretty cool, I've got to be honest. As written on their website, enabled by over 1,400 patented technologies, Neo Power Swap, the first of its kind, offers an ultimate and exclusive power service experience. It takes only three minutes to swap a fully charged battery. Automatic battery and electric system checks are performed during each swap to keep both the vehicle and the battery in the best shape. In fact, we've gotten to try these out on the Autospec team, not me personally, but Kyle was able to have a Neo and take it to a battery swap station at least once. So I will link that video in the description. It's pretty interesting to watch. Definitely could be a future solution to public charging, but also, of course, scaling this is a big question. You know, that takes a lot of real estate, a lot of space, not only, you know, probably underground, but above ground and in general, probably is hard to scale. And then there's the question, of course, that if I'm one of those lucky people renting a solid state battery in my Neo and I pull up and I want to switch it out, how do I make sure that I get another solid state battery and not a lithium ion battery? But that's on Neo's logistics side of things. And maybe we'll cover that in a future podcast. But for now, let's stick to the story at hand. I want to be clear, the future of solid state batteries is definitely one that we long for, but not necessarily one that we have quite yet, at least not at large scale in the EV sector due to the challenges that we've touched on so far. The potential of solid state batteries, though, is just great. They carry the promises of higher energy density, safer energy resources that by eliminating the organic polymer in the lithium ion batteries that we know that is very, very flammable and replacing it with a non-flammable material, we reduce a lot of the risks associated with EV batteries. Additionally, they have faster charging power and longer lifespan for batteries. So like I said, this is an awesome potential future, but we aren't really quite there yet. This is due to the fact that they are inherently more costly than the options that we currently have on the market, and they are more difficult to manufacture. The solid materials that are used to replace the porous electrolytes face scarcity issues and a higher price point. Additionally, we haven't been able to standardize that material that would be used as a replacement for the polymer, and this is that solid state material. And so if that hasn't been standardized in the manufacturing process, you won't be too happy to know that the manufacturing process also hasn't really been standardized in terms of how we build solid state batteries. So it is an emerging technology sector that holds a lot of promise. That is true. I'd like to jump into the way that we do batteries now to be able to just kind of get a visual representation and a nice description if you're just tuning in with your audio ears about the lithium ion batteries that we have today and the 
changing scape that we could see with solid state batteries because at first i was like well what's lithium i mean not what what's lithium but what's liquid and then what's solid so and i'm bringing you some amazing visuals from quantum scape so they have this awesome video that is called what are solid state lithium metal batteries and i will definitely link that below i could have drawn these up myself but i thought listen quantum scape did a great job so i'm going to show you here so if we start with the lithium ion batteries that were first introduced in just 1991 which is kind of crazy to think there are three main layers of the battery so we have the anode this is the negative side the cathode the positive side in between them is the polymer separator and then at each end is the anode electrical contact and then the cathode electrical contact so it's kind of these three main layers and the entire flood i mean excuse me the entire cell is flooded with the electrolyte which is where the lithium ions travel in the cell from the negative to positive ends and then long story short the battery creates power the difference between this and solid state batteries is pretty obvious when you take a look at it. So here we can see the side by side representation of a lithium ion battery and the solid state battery. But if we go back a little bit, we can see how if I play it in the quantum scape video, it states that the solid lithium metal battery only has the two main layers, the cathode and the solid state ceramic separator that replaces the porous separator like in lithium ion cells. Where there was an anode is now just an electrical contact and the anode and cathode ends. As the battery charges, the, the lithium leaves the cathode and travels through the atomic lattice of the non-porous solid state ceramic separator and then deposits between the separator and the electrical contact forming an anode of pure metallic lithium. This is where this higher energy density aspect of the solid state batteries comes from. That is this green spot in the video if you're tuning in that allows for a smaller volume of energy compared to the conventional lithium ion batteries so still a lot of energy but really in a more condensed volume which is very very interesting of course the smaller the batteries but the bigger the capabilities that's the way we things have been trending with technology so that's pretty cool there are many automakers that you probably have heard who are some way somehow investing into solid state battery research and development to name a few there's toyota porsche gm and mercedes and it seems a little bit like an arms race we're not really sure who's going to come out first with a solid state battery on a large scale, but there are companies like Dongfeng, which makes EVs, but also specifically their name brand Nami or Nami features a solid state battery. So they do exist, but when are we gonna be able to take advantage of this potential in this technology? As you probably have heard, NASA also has solid state battery technology, but again, it's about scaling it large scale and we'll have to be able to be patient and see who comes around the pitch first. I'd like to also do a quick comparison of the costs between lithium and solid state batteries. The exact price for solid state batteries isn't widely, you know, really published or known due to the progress that we still need to make. So we've got some estimates here, but we have seen the cost of lithium, of course, lithium ion batteries. And we actually saw that fall over the past decade, which has been really great as we know. So of course, it's a competitive space to come in to see if we can get not only a better option for batteries, but also a less expensive option. But pulling from different sources and different market reports, we've seen, like I said, the costs go down. But pulling from different sources, we're seeing a projected cost of 80 to 90 US dollars per battery by 2030. We've also seen an average price of $98 about per kilowatt hour reported in August of this year, according to Benchmark Mineral Intelligence, which is an energy analytics firm. Some research has reported that we may see prices reach as low as 60 US dollars per kilowatt hour by 2030, but we're just going to have to see what happens. I'm expecting as our most to see that solid state battery technologies will come on the market, it'll be more competitive, we'll have better options out there, and then the price will have to come down, especially if it's going to compete with the lithium ion technology. I just don't think that at the price point that they're at right now, and the fact that it's just not standardized, it's an emerging technology, we just don't know what that's going to look like. Solid state battery prices are estimated to range from $800 per kilowatt hour to $400 kilowatt hours by 2026. So we're, these are pretty drastic. Solid state batteries are more expensive than lithium ion batteries due to the higher costs of solid electrolytes. And we're already concerned about EV prices in general, like I said. However, solid state batteries can hold up to 50% more energy than lithium ion batteries. 
and also are expected to be able to reach an 80% charge within 12 minutes. So they'd be a great alternative to what we have now if only we can do it. So we'll have to keep an eye on who leads in this space. If it's an automaker or an automaker and battery manufacturer partnership or a battery manufacturer on its own, who knows, some organization somewhere will lead in this great frontier and we will just see what happens. I'm not sure exactly what will happen. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Of course, I find battery technology conversations very interesting. And I hope you do too. So thanks for tuning in. If you did enjoy, of course, let me know in the comments, like the video, subscribe, leave a review if you listen to the podcast, and oh, just keep coming back. We'll continue to cover topics that you're into. Thanks again for tuning in to the Out of Spec podcast. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and a review if you're listening online. Of course, suggest it to your friends too if you think that they would be interesting, interested in these topics. Of course, I find them interesting and love to know if you do too. I will see you next time on the Out of Spec podcast. I hope you have an absolute wonderful rest of your day.